Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. We gather as beautiful Savior Lutheran, Lutheran Church uh, in Tucson, Arizona, wherever we are, because we know we gather as the body of the the body of Christ wherever we are. We might go, O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel. And now is the time when we realize that as we're inviting that, we're not inviting God to come into a space that's someplace else. We're inviting God to come into a place that's our home. It's not a bad thing for us to consider. But in all ways, in all days, we can remind ourselves as the psalmist declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome again all to worship on this day. Um, as we gather where we are in, in worship, it helps to kind of set aside a space. Uh, one, you know, suggestion is to, you know, as always, have a candle. We light candles in church to remind ourselves of God's presence, uh, but also we remember um, in light of our baptism and the challenge that's given to us in our baptism to let our light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Also, as it is Advent, if you have an Advent wreath or Advent candles of some sort, or even four candles uh, that you can set out to mark those days. If you're going to join us in communion, please have those elements handy. And as always, have a Bible. And so, brothers and sisters, there's a couple things coming up. Make sure you're aware of. Uh, the first thing is... Um, you know, if you're interested in getting poinsettias, you can still get poinsettias. If you'd like them for your homes or to donate to someone else or in honor of or memory of somebody, um, there's, uh, online, there's online capacities on our website. Otherwise, you can contact the church. Uh, please do, do so soon so we can make sure we get that uh, order and list in properly. Also, just, uh, you know, uh, the lot, big thank you to everyone who helped uh, so much for the Thanksgiving. Uh, they actually have pretty much the food set already for helping out on the 20th, but they are looking for these items that will be helpful to maintain health and safety and sanitation for the people who are down there. Um, and, you know, and the people that, um, that we interact with as part of that ministry of the lot on 22nd Street. So you see the items there. Um, we're kind of turning the old nursery into, shall we say, a nursery of faith, a chance to practice and experience um, you know, generosity and reaching out and advocacy and compassion and encouragement. And so uh, just as we put uh, the items back there this past week for the angel tree and the towel drive, um, there will be bins and places for that there. So thank you if you can pick up some of those, uh, those items um, and drop them off at the church. A, uh, you know, thank you. Um, Speaking of that, you know, we I mentioned the fact that we had the uh, angel, uh, we had that angel tree for the splash houses, and uh, it is a, uh, you know, we just had a pickup of all of those items, and I want to share this uh, video that we got, um, uh, talking about what was picked up. So, Megan, thank you for doing this video. Listen. I have all the gifts loaded up for the Gap Splash House, and I wanted to thank the congregation for so generously supporting this project. We were able to fulfill all the wishes for the eight children who are in the house, ranging from ages of six to 11, and uh, it's going to be truly a special Christmas for them. So thank you again for supporting this. If anyone's interested, they will be having a wrapping party next Wednesday, December 16th. I'll put more information in the bulletin and uh, at the church office if anyone's interested. So thank you again for your support. I have all the gifts loaded up for the... Uh, lovely autoplay. There we go. So thank you for everyone who did that. There will be information in that uh, email that comes out today. Uh, that has some of the, uh, the events that are coming up uh, for the week. We, we put out an email on Sundays to kind of give you a, it's kind of our weekly newsletter um, as a way to give you some stuff. And there's always, you can look on the website. And so thank you for all that participated in those things. Um, and now may we turn, continue in worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God. We confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor to one another. Restore us, O God, wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And so I invite you to, if you have your uh, Advent candles, Advent wreath handy, you can join the Mullen family in a prayer and lighting the candles. Yeah, look at the camera. We praise you, O oh God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation of Christ's advent. As we light the candles of this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. 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 Come, O come, Emmanuel, be with us. As the days grow darker, we still light more candles. Oh, 
And so in that spirit of calling for Emmanuel, may we acknowledge the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your life, light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. <coughs> For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, or as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, <clears throat> so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 126 responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great <laughs> things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negeb. 
those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The Gospel of our Lord for this third Sunday in Advent comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, I know just last week I said, well, now that we're in this year, in this new year, we have, you know, it's a, the, there's another gospel that we use. Last year was Matthew, now we're in Mark. And wait a minute, what's this John passage? Well, you'll find that throughout the year of Mark, uh, there's quite a few John passages that appear, uh, partially because Mark is short, and also uh, that add some other pieces to it. And so here we have a lesson concerning John the Baptist, as recorded in John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Judeans sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, these had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in, the Beth in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, I know this, you know, season and everything is just, I mean, one, I mean, normally the holiday season is nuts. This, you know, the situation we find ourselves in this year is uh, unusual for us. Um, you know, it, it's not something that Americans have had to face in a long time, uh, if truly ever in its history. And so it has led to some unique ways of people trying to deal with things, you know. There was one guy, uh, you know, who wondered, you know, his wife asked him why he put up a canopy in the backyard that had bright lights and funky music being played. He just said, well, this is the winter of our disco tent. Um, on a sad note, um, Santa may be having a little bit of difficulty, pray for clear weather on Christmas Eve. Uh, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer was killed um, he was, he was flying over Barcelona when he was hit by a flock of seagulls in a 747. The eyewitnesses report that the reindeer in Spain was hit mainly by the plane. And, you know, having a social life of any kind is a little bit more complicated. You imagine dating? A friend of mine is torn between two lovers. One makes incredible pancakes. The other writes beautiful poetry. He doesn't know, what it to, it, <clears throat> not sure if he should marry for batter or verse. Okay. Some of you may be wondering, what are we testifying to with this? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm testifying to the fact that we just need, in the middle of all this ridiculousness, something else. Something for us to stop and to go, and take a breath to be able to relax and let go just a little bit in this season of, you know, 
when I grew up north, you know, dashing through the snow, you know, we don't have snow, just trying to accomplish all the lists, but all of the things of this, this, this year and everything going on, the season of expectation, what are we, what are we waiting for? What are we expecting? And what are we participating in are things that we need to stop and we need to, we need to really think about but we need to stop and take a deep breath, you know? And trust me, as someone with one lung, it's a lot easier to take a deep breath without wearing a mask. So for those of you sitting in your homes and not in a situation where one of your people who live with you might be COVID positive or you are, and you are having to wear a mask inside your own home, inside your own home might be a place for you to be able to take a breath and just be and realize that the promise of Emmanuel is not something for a particular building on a particular address in a particular space with a lowercase t on the roof. But maybe that's part of the scary that we're saying, oh, come, oh, come Emmanuel into our homes. And some of you are going, I haven't cleaned. You don't want to see the lower part of this house, what I have to do to do this. But it provides a space for us to focus on what God is doing. And I'm hoping really that we start to take to heart the fact that God's presence in our response are not geographic. They're not spatial, they're special. And they're special because for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And that's for you and for me and for this world and that's everywhere. And so for us to just discern what does it mean to testify to the light, because that's what we're called to do. We're called to witness. We're called to be light. It's, you know, in our baptism, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We're not the light, but we are called to shine that light. We're called to testify to that light. And I know in any kind of Lutheran church, you know, can I get a witness? A whole bunch of people are going to look in other directions and I'll hear the sound of crickets. That's not something we normally think about. But the reality is our lives, our lives in response to this promise, this gift that comes to us, this gift of love and grace, Emmanuel, testifies to what it means. It shows what we believe. It embodies what we think God is about. And so the question is, are we shining light or are we not? Are we bringing light to the world or are we throwing shade? You know, I, you know, I see all kinds of things, you know, out there and around and I, you know, I'm going, where, how is this shining light? How is this encouraging life? How is this proclaiming good news, love, and grace? After all, the angels cried, the messengers to the shepherds on that old holy night proclaimed peace on earth and goodwill. Are we people of peace? Is that what we're testifying to, what we're witnessing in word and deed? Are we Proclaiming goodwill. You know, we can't complain about the state of the world and then act like the world. We are called to be citizens of the kingdom of God. That we are then called to witness and testify to this kingdom of peace and mercy and grace and forgiveness and love in word, in deed. And yes, brothers and sisters, it's tough. 
you know? But just as easy as it is to sit in your home maybe and relax a little bit and take a little bit of time to figure out how you might witness and testify to the presence of a loving God. When you go out in public right now, it's really darn easy to do some witness and testifying to a loving God who cares about one another, the least and the last and the lost and the little, the ones who are the most vulnerable. It's by wearing a mask and keeping a little bit of distance. You know, it, it's a pretty easy gift to give someone else, especially in this time when the hospitals are full and so many people are sick. Brothers and sisters, but even with that, we still testify to the light, the light that comes, that peace and goodwill that comes that is a gift to us. And yes, we're going to screw it up. There are times when we're going to be a dim bulb when it comes to how well we're shining. There are times when we might be actively trying to put other people's lights out. Not good. And not what we should be about. Right now, our, uh, our family, our Jewish family members, are celebrating Hanukkah, the festival of lights. And if you look at a menorah, there is one candle that is used right in the center. It's called the shamash. It is, it is, a can, it is that candle that is used to light all of the other candles. And so for us, maybe we can learn something from that and go, you know, maybe we need to be that shamash. Our job is not to try to put anybody else's candle out, but to be a candle that lights up other lights. If it's dark, light other lights through peace and love and hope, through gifts. Of, you know, we witness and testify to the light by being a bearer of that light. Let that light so shine before others. You know, ironically, one of the best examples I ever heard uh, that describes, it, you know, describes what we're to be about comes from a Buddhist monk where he talked about the fact that, you know, he's like, we have the same job, really. And he said, let's say you're walking down the street with your friends and the moon comes out and it's absolutely lovely. And you go, hey, look at the moon. Your job is not to go look at me or even look at the hand pointing at the moon, but to draw attention to the moon, to witness to the moon, to testify to the moon and to its loveliness to its presence. For us, how do we witness and testify to the loveliness and presence of Emmanuel, of Jesus Christ, the one who came in a surprising way to bring us God's love and grace and mercy, to bring about the coming of the kingdom of God, the one we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done, which implies the fact that we will participate in that. And so how might we let that light shine? Through acts of generosity or reaching out, advocacy, compassion, encouragement. There's countless ways in which we might be that light, that light that even might light another one. To let light shine in the darkness, to let that light be seen, to let that, our light be shown, that good work. More importantly, to make all know the presence and the love of a God who came in a surprising way to proclaim love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. May we remember those gifts that we receive, those gifts that are meant to be shared and shown to all. And so as we contemplate the light, the light that we are to testify to, the white light we are to witness to. Let us remind ourselves of the promise that God gave us in baptism. If you repeat after me. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. 
And in those promises, in that light that was given, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us testify to the light and love of Jesus Christ. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us. Let us find our rest in thee. invite you to join me as we confess the faith of the church, the words of the Apostles' Creed, our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the people, we lift up those prayers, those joys and concerns have been shared with us in various ways. Um, you know, for those of you uh, joining us via Facebook Live, you can be uh, putting them in the comment section and those in, in Zoom can drop them in the chat. And so it's an opportunity for us to continue to, to pray for all of those that are on our hearts and our minds and all those things that are there. And so I invite you as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O oh Lord, Hear our prayer. Hope of all creation, healer of relations, we lift our prayer to you. We lift our prayer.
for all of those needing health and healing. And especially Joyce, Gretchen, Jim and Kim, Miguel, Pam, Anne, Mary, Diane and Jean, Barbara, Davey, the Ivan family with COVID, Vi, Robert, Mary, Ryan, Lisa, Jim, Debbie, Don, Jerry, Jasmine, Marnie, Manfred, Linda, Christian, Connie, Russell, Cindy, Frank, ML, Connie, Olivia, Matthew, GC, and Kelly. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Hope of all creation, healer of relations, we lift our prayer to you. We lift our prayer to you. For all those dealing with cancer, especially Shirley, JR, Heidi, Russell, Evan, Susan, Barb, Sherry, and Bill. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, For all first responders, healthcare workers, those who care for others, especially the most vulnerable in our population. Especially we pray for Brianna, Colin, Betsy, Mike, Jennifer, Aaron, PJ, Christine, Lindsay, Greg, Erica, Cara, Aaron, Nancy, Linda, Matthew, Randy, Susan, Sarah, Emma, Samantha, Rachel, Mark, Michelle, Chris, and Josh as they are deployed, uh, deployed, and all others that are deployed. And we pray for all of those who are working in the healthcare field, especially those who are facing increasing pressure and loads uh, in this latest surge of COVID. May they be kept safe and able to take care of us. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Hope of all creation, healer of relations, we lift our prayer to you. We lift our prayer to you. For all those who mourn, especially at this time of the year with holidays and other things, sometimes it just makes it um, loss uh, even more feeling acute and just difficult. Uh, but also in this time and place, you know, for the 300,000 plus who passed away from COVID in our country, um, and plus all the countless others who died for so many other reasons, um, this might be a, a tougher time of the year for so many people. And so we, Keep them in our prayers and our concerns. But we especially lift up the family and friends of Frank Pavisic, Audrey Isaac, Becky Sewell, Roger Gonzalez, Captain Cole Lindell. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh,
for those facing tragedies, man-made and natural, far away and nearby. We pray for their restoration and their care and their comfort. And we pray for those who seek to provide and to help and support. For our neighbors in the First Nations who are dealing with poverty and pandemic, including lockdowns again. For those with health concerns that make this time even more scary. Uh, for those who are alone and isolated, even before, but maybe even more so, or even just feeling it people like Hilda and Mary. For those who are facing housing, food, healthcare, and financial insecurity, especially Renee, Donna, and Lonnie. And for, for all of those people who are struggling with the issue of work, enough work, enough pay, healthcare, or worried about making the decision about going to work and risking their health or the health of the people they live with and love and care for, for their own for strength for this journey that we are all on, knowing that we're not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm, that there are many, many whose boats are already going under. For those who are known only to God that are on our hearts right now. And for all of those other worries and concerns in this season, may we turn to you, dear Lord, and give them to you. O Lord, hear our prayer. Home of all creation, healer of relations, we lift our prayer. also know that fundamentally you are about life and hope. You are about grace. And so we give you thanks for all the ways we see that in our lives through the generosity that was shown for the gap houses, the, the splash houses, for their angel tree, for the towel drive, for the food drives, for interfaith community services, for all of the ways in which we support and work with Tihan and all the other agencies and groups that we do, all the ways in which we embody generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement, all these other ways we let that light shine, that light of the grace of God in Jesus Christ that is given to us. May we celebrate that, but may we just celebrate the gift of life. For this, we wait in anticipation of the birth of the Christ child, but also we give thanks for the birth of children in our own midst, so we give thanks for the birth of Louise Bergdahl's granddaughter, Melanie Martell. And for we know that it's a sign, he had said that every new child is a sign from God that God hasn't given up on the world. Nothing else, Christmas is a strong example that God does not give up on the world and instead gave us a child. So may we celebrate and give thanks for life. And so we celebrate the, the birthdays of Sally Martin and Randy Port and Erna Werner and all of those other signs of life, all those other ways in which we see light shining. May we see it, may we celebrate it, may we share it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we celebrate this gift, as we remember the presence of Emmanuel and peace on earth and goodwill to all, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And so find some ways to be that bearer of peace. Let that light shine for the world and however you can do it. A thank you to all for you know your continued offerings uh, in all the other ways you continue to support the ministry here, Beautiful Savior Lutheran Tucson. Um, we still receive checks. Uh, there's the electronic giving options on the web. 
And again, remember that uh, we're using the nursery more for some of those places, things you can drop off for some of the offerings and um, the gifts that you can give. Um, and so that, uh, you know, for those ways in which you can uh, model generosity. We missed Leon's birthday. I just saw a note. Oh, Leon, happy, happy birthday to you, bud. May it be a good day, since I'm sure you're spending it with grandpa. It's got to be a great day. And so let us pray. Generous God, you've created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Now, I invite you to set the table at this point in time. You're going to participate in the communion service. A reminder of Emmanuel, God with us, his presence with us, and the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And so, yes, the pastor has a communion set. Big surprise. All right. But for you, simple, you know, simple plate, simple cup, yeah, bread, cracker, something simple, wine, grape juice, something simple. It's just an opportunity, again, to remind ourselves, you know, Emmanuel, God with us. God is truly present. The communion of saints gathers. The body of Christ gathers. The great cloud of witnesses is gathered to receive this gift, this reminder, this blessing, this presence of God. And so I invite you, if you, you know, to set your table, and then we'll begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gathered around the throne of grace, we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Brothers and sisters, we gather in the spaces where we are reminding ourselves that Emmanuel does come, that Christ is indeed present, that we remind ourselves that the promise of the prophets is here, that the straight paths have been made to us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that which we look for with hope and anticipation for Christmas, but we also know is each and every day. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so may we be reminded of your presence in our lives. May we be nourished by your body and blood. May we see the promise fulfilled. May we see that light come to the world, the light that is coming into our lives. May we know this, love, this gift of love and service and grace, the gift of your son. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may it strengthen us and send us forth in joy to proclaim Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. Brothers and sisters, family members of the body of Christ, if you have someone with you that you can do this, take turns giving and receiving. If not, it's not like you're alone. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Christ is present in your midst. The great cloud of witnesses is gathered around you. This body of Christ is here. And so the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat, take and drink. These gifts given for you.
I love that one. Thank you, Luann and Becky and Aaron for making that possible. Uh, I, I really like that one. I prefer that one to Mary, the sh did you know, and stuff like that. That one's just, thank you. One of the blessings that we have in this situation to be able to let that light shine, to be able to testify to the goodness of God in different ways. Thank you for all, for all, for all of you who made that possible and shared it with us. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, we will, uh, you know, we have a, we'll have the blessing and the dismissal, and you know, there will be a time for, uh, with the, after the post loop from Becky, I'll have an opportunity for some, uh, you know, fellowship time. Obviously, if any of you joining us from Facebook Live, you can see, but you can't really participate. Uh, but for those of you on Zoom, uh, you have an opportunity there. So we go forth with the blessing. The Creator of the stars, bless your Advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever amen go in peace prepare the way of the lord thanks be to god